Go ahead, Eva. All right. Well, welcome everybody to this round table for action on nuclear waste. And I'm delighted to have so many people here from many parts of the country um, and to see how much interest there is and how much activism on, um, on this issue that concerns us all, nuclear waste and protecting our environment and of course human health. Um, so my name is Eva Shackrell. I'm with the Council of Canadians Ottawa chapter. So um, we'll go right into the first presentation. It's from Gordon Edwards, uh, the founder and president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility. And I think he probably needs little introduction as one of the absolutely leading figures in um, getting us all informed and, and engaged on, this, on these issues. And he's going to talk about our national waste policy and its, its difficulties, its uh, shortcomings. So take it away, Gordon. I think it's important to realize that radioactivity is not a thing. It's a property of certain dangerous materials. They, we're talking about radioactive materials when we talk about radioactive waste. Sometimes the word radiation uh, conveys a kind of an abstraction and people don't realize that we're really talking about pollutants. So um, a radioactive nucleus is, what, is one that is unstable and explodes. And when it explodes, it gives off a kind of a subatomic shrapnel. And that's what damages living cells and causes the health effects that we're all familiar with, the cancers and other things that happen. Radioactive materials get, like ordinary chemicals, get into the food chain, they get into the drinking water, they get into the air, and consequently into the plants and animals and, of course, into our own bodies. And uh, that's where the damage is done. So uh, although there is penetrating radiation which can harm you at a distance, and that is something to be concerned about, uh, one of the greatest concerns is the slow accumulation of pollutants, radioactive pollutants, into your body that can go to certain organs, depending upon the chemistry of the element, it'll go to one organ or another. Some of them concentrate in the thyroid, some concentrate in the bone, some concentrate in the lungs, some in the soft tissue like cesium-137, making the meat of animals inedible for human beings and so on. So um, there are five types of radioactive waste I'd like to mention, uh, just so that we're aware of the fact that we're dealing with this huge radioactive legacy of the nuclear age that we cannot get rid of. We have to manage it for extremely long periods of time. Uranium tailings or mill waste are dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, and these are natural radioactive materials, but we have brought them to the surface and in mining uranium, we bring these things to the surface and make them much more available to the environment. The high level radioactive waste is the used nuclear fuel from nuclear reactors. That's dangerous for tens of millions of years. Although many of the materials in the high-level radioactive waste or used fuel um, disappear after a period of decades or centuries or even millennia, there are others that uh, uh, remain for extremely long periods of time and others that are bred into the fuel as time goes on. Things that are less known are the intermediate level waste. Intermediate level waste are things like the core components from a nuclear reactor which can give a lethal dose of radiation in a matter of minutes or half an hour, um, depending upon the core component in, in exchange. They're very dangerous materials. And the ion exchange resins or various isotopes that are used for medical or industrial purposes, these are uh, sufficiently radioactive that they're called intermediate level waste. There's a low level waste, which is largely uh, contaminated soil, garments, rubble from demolishing radioactively contaminated buildings, et cetera. And finally, there's one that we don't talk about much in Canada, the transuranic waste. Uh, these are mostly occurring when you have a weapons program that uses plutonium. These are plutonium contaminated waste, contaminated with plutonium and other uh, heavier than uranium elements. Now, the inventory of radioactive waste in Canada, there's 218 million tons of radioactive sand left over from um, uranium mining. 218 million tons, and there's also about, uh, uh, about 156 million tons of radioactive waste rocks left over from mining as well. 
These have to be kept out of the environment for an awfully long time. Again, tens of thousands of years. The high level radioactive waste is measured in terms of 3.3 million fuel bundles, which would weigh approximately 60 million kilograms or, or 60,000 tons. So uh, the, the timeline that we're concerned about is in 2019, a team of international experts reported on Canada's nuclear regulatory regime and gave recommendations. One of those recommendations was for Canada to formulate an enhanced radioactive waste policy. In 2020, Canada accepted that recommendation. And in 2021 to 2023, there was a consultation process on this new policy. Over 100 groups, NGOs uh, participated through the good auspices of Nuclear Waste Watch, led by Bernane Lloyd. And Canada's draft policy on rad waste and decommissioning was issued by Natural Resources Canada. Ole Hendrickson led the effort to produce an alternative rad waste policy, which included um, thoughts from the NGOs, Canadian NGOs. And now we have the current radioactive waste policy framework, which came out last year. Now, there's some points raised by Canadian NGO participants that were ignored by the government. Number one, the industry should not be deciding nuclear waste policy. This is something the government has turned over the formulation of the nuclear waste policy and the nuclear waste strategy, which is something else, uh, to the industry. Um, we also have made the point repeatedly that CNSC is, not, is a captured regulator and is not publicly accountable. And we need an independent waste and decommissioning agency uh, if we want to have any confidence going forward in the long run. Reprocessing uh, should be banned in Canada. We made that point very strongly and uh, there was a, a, a campaign over that. But the government of Canada has said, well, while as there's no reprocessing going on currently, uh, we may consider it in the future and that will be a government decision. So they have, they have not banned reprocessing in Canada. We've also said, the NGOs, there should be no import of radioactive waste to Canada. Um, there should be no abandonment of radioactive waste because it is too dangerous to put beyond human control. Major water bodies must be avoided for rad waste facilities. And the full force of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples must be respected, which means that dangerous toxic materials should not be stored or, um, or abandoned on Indigenous lands. So Canada's policy for radioactive waste management and decommissioning is a 13-page document. You can download it from the internet. It has many pages. The first, the first uh, few pages are basically an advertisement for the nuclear industry saying how good nuclear technology is, how much we depend upon it. And it mentions radioactive waste and it says, radioactive waste is defined as any material, liquid, gaseous, or solid, that contains a radioactive nuclear substance for which no further use is foreseen. There is no indication in the document that these materials are dangerous to health, are dangerous to the environment, but simply that they are unwanted materials. So we feel that the government is, is really downplaying the whole issue of radioactive waste, trivializing it almost. Um, on pages five to six of the document, they give their vision. They say health, safety and security and nuclear non-proliferation are our main goals. And arrangements for the management, including disposal of materials, may be different for, and they mention, high-level radioactive waste, intermediate-level radioactive waste, low-level radioactive waste, and uranium mine and mill tailings. And those terms are nowhere else used in the document. If you search for those terms elsewhere in the document, you will not find them anywhere. So in fact, they don't address, really, the different classes, the major classes of radioactive waste materials. Instead, they deal with generalities. The four priorities they lay out in pages six to seven, and this is not actually part of the policy, up to page seven, we're still dealing with preamble. Uh, they say the four priorities are health, safety, security, and non-proliferation, that's number one. Two is engagement, openness, and transparency. Uh, partnerships with indigenous peoples is, is uh, the third one. And the fourth one is global excellence in waste and decommissioning. 
And so then they go through the actual policy and these four policies are arranged around those four priorities. Now I have a summary of each one of these four priorities on my slideshow, which I will make available to anyone who, uh, who contacts me. Uh, my email address is ccnr at web.ca and I'll make it available of the group. Um, one of the things that the government did was they completely hived off the process of, uh, as opposed to the policy, they hived off the job of developing a strategy to the NWMO, the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, which is a creature of the nuclear industry. This is a, uh, this is a, a body that is controlled by the waste producers. And uh, they uh, conducted a, uh, an exercise in formulating a proposed strategy, suggested it to the government, which the government simply adopted without going back to the public, without going back to the 100 plus uh, NGOs that had participated in the policy discussions. So there was no discussion with civil society in, uh, in the government's adoption of this industry-led uh, strategy. Wilkinson, the Minister of Natural Resources, said, while radioactive waste considerations are important, they pale in comparison to the pollution produced by unabated high carbon power production. So basically, he simply points to the climate change problem as a way of minimizing concern about radioactive waste. It seems like a, a very odd uh, approach to a serious problem. The end of your most strategy is simply that we should have for the high level waste, that is the used nuclear fuel, a deep geological repository. And we all are aware that they're wanting to choose a site between two surviving candidates this calendar year. Then for the intermediate level waste, like the core components and other things that I was describing to you earlier, they want a deep geological repository, another deep geological repository for those materials. Presumably it would not be the same geological repository, but that's unclear. Will it be the same or will it not be the same? Then there's low level waste. And when it comes to low level waste, they're talking about multiple near surface disposal facilities. Now, uh, near, that basically means mega dump on the surface, a mound five to seven stories high of radioactive waste, such as we have proposed at Chalk River for the near surface disposal facility, uh, a mound that would be something like seven stories high, covering about 14 hectares of land and containing about a million tons of radioactive and non-radioactive toxic materials. So this is the future, ladies and gentlemen, according to uh, NWMO's vision, that we would have these low level mounds uh, wherever they are required. Um, and finally, for uranium mine and mill waste, they just talk about disposal facilities near the point of waste generation. So um, this, is what the, uh, this is what we're facing. And I think that uh, we're hoping that this webinar today may be uh, an incentive for many of you to uh, feel the need to keep uh, up to date on what's going on with radioactive waste in Canada and with an action-oriented point of view. That is, what can we do to make this situation better? Right now, it's looking as if the government has simply abdicated responsibility to the industry. And uh, uh, they seem to believe that that's perfectly okay and in doing so that they have done their job. We are convinced that the ministers and the uh, parliamentarians have really a, a vastly um, unrealistic view of the nature of these radioactive wastes and the long-term hazards that they do pose. Um, they do talk about um, nuclear reactor decommissioning and they say CNL, now here's, here's something that is particularly irksome. Um, right now we have a situation where two federally owned nuclear reactors, one on the Ottawa River and the other on the Winnipeg River, are facing uh, a, an, an environmental assessment under the old law. Under the new law, they might not even need an environmental assessment. But under the old law, they need an environmental assessment and it, they proposed to simply bury those two reactors right beside the river and pour concrete. So just dig a hole, 
drop the whole reactor down into that hole and then just flood it with concrete. And that's their disposal method for reactor decommissioning. Strongly disapproved of by the International Atomic Energy Agency, which says quite sternly that this should not be done except in extreme emergency situations. However, Canada seems to be taking a defiant attitude towards this and says, uh, well, um, that's, what we're th that's what we are proceeding with. 